man is raping a woman, he's not worried about getting her pregnant. He doesn't care. It's not in the back of his mind. He doesn't even think about it. And as a woman, I wouldn't want to raise a child that I have to look at their face every day and see my attacker. It just, it would not be something that I think would be healthy. And I'm not sure what the statistics are, you know, with HIPAA and everything, it's really difficult to kind of narrow that down, but I'm sure it's, it's, it's near 50, 50. Well, uh, yeah, it's, you know, the other obvious concern is the slippery slope that, you know, this paves the way for, um, you know, an IUD is that, you know, is that an abortion it's, in some people's views that are really happy right now? Yeah. Um, other constitutionally things, things that constitutionally weren't, you know, enshrined, but later, yeah, I'm probably preaching to the choir on that one. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think this just paves the way for more rights to be stripped. Um, you know, gay marriage in Japan, they're not even allowing it. And I can absolutely see that happening with this current Supreme Court. And it's just it's disheartening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, commentators that I respect are, you know, saying that they, they fully believe that that's on the horizon. Um, I, I'd like to think that that isn't the case, but I can't categorically disagree with the, uh, the logic behind it. Yeah. No, I'm in Texas and, um, if, yeah, if <laughs> I know, uh, if they had their their opportunity or their chance, they would absolutely ban gay marriage. I fully fully believe that. Max Flower Thirteen, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, I'm I'm not covering my identity because I'm scared. Um, I just I have kids and. I also don't have social media. This is the only social media that I've participated in. Um, so that's just something that that I do. I don't have my face out there for the world to see. So that's why I cover it. Can someone, Max, can someone tell me who's on the right? Is it telescope or who? I don't, I don't understand. I guess they're asking who you are. Just like if you're if you're if you were in the chat. Oh, anyway. oh yeah, I'm sorry. I should change my name. Um, I'll put it in chat. And uh, elsewhere. Oh, well, yeah, slow mode. Elsewhere there. G. Abbott is G. Abbott. Somebody asked who G. Abbott is. I'm just the same person. <laughs> I didn't change anything. Um, I know CK Music is talking about it going to the state level. How do you feel about that? I mean, my thing is, is, you know, we're the United States of America, and I just don't see the point in being the United States of America if we're not going to have a united front on things. I don't necessarily believe in federal government overreach, but government is government, whether it's state or federal. But you know, this is a secular issue, not, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, not, uh, I mean, states' rights, you know, having that check and balance kind of interplay, yeah, it, that that's fine with me, but I don't, we're talking like a 50-year precedent here. Uh, it's pretty unheard of, right? Oh, absolutely. Well, and we also, I mean, there's so many other countries that I guess you could consider third world to a degree that that have abortion rights so we're setting yeah like you said we're setting ourselves back it was precedent and it just is it's mind-blowing it's just crazy to me and i uh Patton's asking what's my fear of having states determine the localized opinion of this issue i don't have a fear of it i'm all for it but unfortunately it's it, if you, I don't know if you live in Texas or not, but um, <laughs> they've been fighting this for a little bit longer than today. Right? Yeah. When you when you live in a great state where your your opinions align with the government, then yeah, I'm all for it. But unfortunately, I'm stuck here and they don't align. So. <laughs> CKM, I'll have to look at that as far as um, Rose Bader Ginsburg's concerned. The only clip that I've seen of her discussing it, um, it, it didn't seem like she was, she seemed more like she was on the fence. So I'll have to go look 
back and look at that where she said it was bad law. All right, chat. You know, I jumped up here because uh, Mrs. Abbott uh, needed you know, need somebody to talk to. It's, it's your turn now. There's peer pressure. Peer I appreciate pressure. it. Or I could just oh, Eric. I'm sorry. No. Nothing. Um, Eric, yeah, I would like to be out there more. Um, I just, I'm a really private person. I just, um, I haven't been on any social media platforms in nearly 10 years. Um, and I just, I usually don't leave my house. So <laughs> I'm just kind of, I'm just a really private person. I'd have to figure out a way to conceal my identity if I wanted to go any further. CKM music, I would love for you to come pop on here if you want. Hey, I'm a pacifist, so, you know, my identity is, my defense is uh, not being a violent person, I guess, so there's that. But you mentioned the kid thing, so. That's Hello, fun. Abby. Hi, Jeff, how are you? Very good, I got a question for you. Sure. Seeing how we both live in the same God forbidden state. Mm -hmm. I, I understand you want to hide your identity because of the kids and stuff. I, 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 I can understand that. But if you're trying to get a point across, why not let people know who you really are? Oh, I, I, well, that's a great question. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'm necessarily trying to get a point across. I just like talking. Um, and like I said, I, I work from home and I'm home pretty much all the time unless I'm out shopping or something. So um, it's just something fun for me to do and, and get out there. Maybe later on I will. But um, like I said, I have not been on social media. I don't have pictures on the Internet of myself. So um, to do that would be something I'd have to I'd have to uh, tread lightly on that one. Uh, I, I can understand that. And Eric, no, it's not Professor Jeff. Get over that little hump. <laughs> no, but I agree with you. Texas, of all states, unfortunately, is in the Bible band, which sucks. Mm -hmm. And they got a philosophy in Texas. If you're not from Texas, you're, you're nothing. Right. And I'm actually not, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not from Texas. Um, I've lived here for almost 10 years. Um, I was married to someone in the military and we were stationed here and then we got divorced. So I'm here. Um, my children's father is here. That's why I maintain my residency in Texas so they can be close to their dad. Um, but yeah, if I had my choice, I wouldn't be here. I was actually born in California and raised in Virginia. So I picked Virginia first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Virginia's beautiful. I miss it. But um, yeah, so my views have never really aligned with the Texas mentality. I always thought it was very bizarre that they're they're so um, state. -driven. I've been here for four years, and I'm like, what the hell did I get myself into? Right. What part are you in? Are you in the South? Uh, the I'm about two hours from the border between Texas and Louisiana. Okay, so I actually lived. I I finished out my high school in uh, near Corpus, so. Um, uh, have you ever heard of a town called Canton? Where oh, yeah. They do trace days? Yes. I'm 10 miles from that. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so you're you're well aware of the, the climate here. Oh, yeah. Especially in more rural areas. It's, um, I try to just, I do a lot of vacation. No, Eric, I don't. Yeah, we do a lot of vacation homes, and I just try to keep to myself when we go out there, too, just because usually they're in the country, and, and it's just well, not something I, to do. I can definitely tell you in Texas, depending on where you're at, depends on what kind of people you come across. Absolutely. Yeah. Hill Country is definitely. And, and the higher up you get in the Bible Belt, the worse they get. Yes. And exactly. I happen to be living in one of them towns. I know. It's, it's just the way it is. Well, I don't. I'm a Christian, but I, I don't understand why people want to force it down somebody's throat. It's called freedom yeah. of choice. 
Yeah, it's it's become more prevalent since Trump came into office. And I just find that so ironic because Trump is not a Christian um, <laughs> all day long. But um, I don't have a Texas accent. Never will. Oh. <laughs> I don't associate with Texas. No, the Cowboys are the cowgirls. Does that tell you how much I like Texas? What brought you to Texas? Long story. I understand that. It was a move I should never have done. That's a frustrating thing for me about like Trump, that you know, champion does GOP and pro life. The people that would believe that that guy is actually pro life and not just using it politically, just as a magic wand, is you're not you're never going to convince them that. But well, I'm not piss off a lot of people. Donald Trump is pro Trump. Right. Absolutely. He does not. Like my boyfriend said that the other night when we were on and he said, you know, Trump wouldn't give any of the convoy people, for instance, the time of day. He does not like them. He, um, if you don't have money or power, you are nobody. You are a fly on the wall. They, he doesn't care. Well, um, the sad part is people never watched The Apprentice. And that showed Trump for who Trump really was. Well, even if you do have money and power, you're only in the good graces as long as you're useful. So it... It goes so much higher than the narcissism just goes so much higher than than just you know the, the nobodies right so absolutely yeah it's highly narcissistic it's it's almost as though they completely forgot the man who who and how he behaved before his presidency this has never been a very um giving well, person that's why i said most people who like trump never watch the apprentice exactly well, they, because they made, that they show made. was Donald Trump in his prime. And that man was disrespectful, rude, obnoxious, condescending, and was all about money. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. And still is. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. But given the choices, I, when it came time to vote between him and Hillary Clinton, I went Trump. Just for right. the simple fact is I didn't want to put a treason in as the president of the United States. And I'm sorry, all those Hillary followers, Hillary Clinton committed treason against this country. How so? She let her emails out to other people that she shouldn't have in other countries. That's considered treason. Seems like pretty light treason compared to uh, some other things I can... Oh, we can go down the list of all the politicians. That's why I said all politicians need to go to prison. Because they're all corrupt. Oh. Both sides. I love my blanket statement. That's an honest statement. I'm going to stay out of that one. <laughs> I, have to, I have to reference Gambler real quick. Um, I'm not crying about Texas. Texas is pretty. Um, I go and I do a lot of... That. I do a lot of great vacation homes in Texas. Um, it's reasonably affordable. Um, it, the cost of living was great before before the pandemic. Um, but I don't like the ideology, and I don't like the way people treat people here. Um, the southern hospitality is lost on this, on, at least in the area I'm in. Um, so that's all I was saying. I don't really cry about it on a daily basis. I could really give a fuck less. Um, but my kids are here. I'm here, they live with me, and their dad's here, and I'm just trying to be a great co-parent. So, that's it. Well, the, the problem there, Gavit, mm -hmm. is Texas used to be hospitable. Used mm -hmm. to. Past tense. And it hasn't been that way in about 15 years. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yep. Yeah, when I was here in the early 2000s, I thought it was a great place. Then I came back yeah. and things changed. Just the way it is. Drastically. Yeah. The, the weird thing about the whole state's rights, like, line of thinking where, like, oh, you don't like the laws of the state, just move it out. It's like, that, that's not how it works. Like, one, you don't, people don't have, always have the financial means to move out. And two, they, people have roots. You have families and lives. And, well, I just had it roots in a state. So it's not, it's not like it's, you know, picking a different avatar off on the internet. It's, yeah. Right. Well, that's like telling a poor person to move out of the area they're in. Okay, great. Show and? me out. 
Right, exactly. And I think that's a lot of people's problems is we all have we all have solutions to problems, but it's just the the, the uh, there's no context to it. So it's just the same. But there's well, actually no real there's no real um, w- way to to go about it. The biggest problem came around because COVID. That's what put a lot of people in the position they're in on hurting as much as they are because businesses closed down jobs closed down people were losing their homes and society as we know it has not rebounded back from that they're still suffering right and they'll continue to suffer as long as the government keeps forcing it and that's exactly what they're doing well and the reason that things have gone to shit since the pandemic as well is because of the way Trump has had handled everything. I actually was um, kind of intrigued by Trump's economic policies in the beginning. And I thought perhaps it would have been a nice, refreshing change, even though I did know that all the stuff about him and, you know, grabbed it by the pussy and all that stuff, whatever. Um, I'm not, I have thick skin, so that didn't bother me. Um, well, but here's the bad then part. that all changed. Biden's done worse than Trump did. Um, as far as policy is concerned? Yep. Um, I think a lot of what we have going on right now is to blame because of the pandemic. Um, I think it was just a natural progression into what we're at right now. Uh, I absolutely think there will be a major recession. Um, we're already in it. What are you talking yeah. about? I think we're already in it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, I'm actually a realtor, and uh, it's going to get bad. So, um, as far as the housing market's concerned, so. I think a little bit had to do with the pandemic, but yeah, absolutely. Biden definitely has not handled things the way that I thought he was going to. Uh, the only good thing Trump did about the pandemic is he did enact the Emergency Powers Act. He did that right. Downfall is Biden has extended it three times when it shouldn't have been. Mm-hmm. And that's what's keeping us in the position we're in. He's a J- what do you think is so bad about the emergency declaration? What's so bad about it? Okay, Emergency Powers Act. Once it's enacted, it gives the government more power than what they deserve to have. And how has that affected you? It affects everybody on everything they do every single day. Give me an example. Give you an example. Yes. First Amendment right taken away. What rights have been taken away? Freedom of speech. Where? You Have you not been watching around people? Walk up to a politician and speak freely and watch how fast you get locked up. Have you done that? Yes. And what happened? I got locked up for three hours. What and all I said was told the politician was he was corrupt. That's all I said. You're a corrupt politician. This was in Texas? Yep. Guess what politician? Who? Ted Cruz. Well, that's not surprising. That doesn't have anything to do with the Emergency Power Act. That just tells you that Ted Cruz is an asshole. Well, we already knew that. Well, have nothing to do with the Emergency Powers Act, though. Uh, Ted Cruz is one of them politicians, like, like most of the politicians. They're in it for themselves, and they don't care what it does or who it hurts. So give me an example of a right that has been taken away because of the Emergency Powers Act. So you don't think your rights have been filtered back or taken away at all? Nope. Okay. That's your opinion. And you're entitled to it. But I'm just asking you to support your theory that I, I, I just that. did I don't think you did oh I did you gave, you gave me a totally unrelated situation no I walked up to a politician and spoke the truth and it violated I was violated of my first amendment right which is freedom of speech did you sue him no maybe you should why it's not going to change who he is well, nothing's going to change. What does that have to do with the Emergency Powers Act? 
was this during was this during Jeff was this during COVID at the 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 peak of it were you no, it was, this was at his last talk he had here three months ago uh, the, what, what were you charged with exactly this was at his last this talk only conduct because how dare I speak to a politician about being honest hey buddy hi buddy I'd seek counsel on that one. That doesn't seem like something I'm, that would be constitutional. No, nah, I'm going to give him the best way possible. Hey. I'm going to vote his ass out of office. Hey, go ahead. I'm going to get him where it hurts the most, his pocketbook. Vote him out. Well, I think what a lot of people um, misunderstand about the Emergency Powers Act is that that was instilled back in the 1970s. It's always been around. Um, uh, the, it's the, the, not going anywhere. Um, well, it, don't get me wrong. The Emergency Powers Act is a good thing mm -hmm. because it is supposed to be active during natural disasters to help get funding and stuff in for people that have been affected by it. That's what it was designed for. That's a good mm -hmm. thing. Right. But this government we got right now is abusing that to do what they want to do. Like what? Give me an example. Uh, the Emergency Powers Act was not designed to be extended three times back to back. It was designed to be put out one time and let it run its course for the one time it's put out there. At the end of the first time it's laid down on the table, it ends. It so doesn't get extended. You informed, have you informed COVID yet? Or I don't Do you honestly think COVID's asking. still out there? Yes. 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 Oh okay. yeah, I'm I'm vaccinated. I am boosted, and I have gotten sick several times. And I, I haven't gotten sick yet. I absolutely 100% think that it was COVID, and I never got tested, so I'm not sure. But COVID's absolutely still out there. Uh, probably, but it's just like the flu; it comes and goes. But I no, it's not, not been vaccinated, like and I've never it's had it. Not like the flu. I'm sorry. I'm a nurse. It's yeah, not I'm a nurse like as well. I well, I was a nurse. I, <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's definitely false information. I don't like that being put out there. It's no. It's uh, if, if you think about it, COVID's a virus. The flu is a virus. So is herpes. Exactly. So is AIDS. But exactly. herpes will. But herpes will stick with you forever. I mean, there viruses mutate. Viruses just because something is a yes. virus doesn't mean that they're 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 equal alike or that they will affect you got the body. Different the levels. You got different levels of viruses. The common flu or a common cold is a virus. Different it's levels. Like the and the cold, the cold can be dangerous. You know, to those with, you know, immune suppressed systems, just like. Oh COVID. yeah, people die from the flu every year. Exactly, and I think that's why, I feel like common sense procedures to keep everyone safe. You know. The best thing I heard was a doctor one time said, you know, hey, we're not asking people to give up a kidney. We're just asking you to wear a mask when it makes sense to protect other people. Well, that's a selfless act. And a lot of people yes. don't know how to how to do that. I just think that they're I totally wired agree. Very wow. selfish, extremely selfish people. Yes, C CDC did it, said it the best way. Use common sense, mm -hmm. just like if you would any other virus floating around in the air. That's not what they said. You disinfect, Sorry. you take precautionary measures so you don't catch it and you don't spread it. That's just common sense. And if part of that precautionary measure is wearing a mask, so what? You wear the mask. That's part of the precautionary measures. Right. That's just common sense. As far as the emergency, emergency Powers Act and it being instilled several times, that was because of the progression of COVID, because we were still dealing with it. We still are dealing with it, but just on a smaller scale. Now, do I think they're good, they're going to do it again? Probably not, but we never they already know. have. They're calling it the monkey, monkey pox. Yeah, but uh, come on. I mean, please, they're not doing, they're not doing there. anything else. Hey, they're not done doing please what they're doing, so that's why they're doing what they're doing. Well, it's all a control talks, issue. Doing what? Who's doing that? Is it's the government. It's all about talks? control. Uh, Who? My, my understanding of the Emergency Powers Act is that it's been renewed every year for 50 years and has 130 different provisions, uh, many of them foreign policy related. I, 
I'm not going to try to like relitigate or discuss how broad sweeping that act is and how little it has to do with COVID in particular. Well, that's the reason Donald Trump put it out there was because of the COVID when it hit the United States. Trying to get vaccines put out there, trying to get people protected and everything else. And the way he did that was by enacting the Emergency Powers Act. With that and throwing up the mandate. Um, with that time machine. Are you referencing Trump and what he did? Trump is what started the Emergency Powers Act. Biden's just continued it. Right. Now I think you're thinking Carter. No, right. no, 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 no. Initially, no. yes. With COVID, Donald Trump is the first one that enacted the Emergency Powers Act and came up with the mandates with the masks and stuff. And then Biden has continued it. Because Trump threw it out to just before he got elected out of office. Nope. Trying to get vaccines generated to be able to fight COVID. And with the Emergency Powers Act, he was able to get the vaccines into pro production faster. Because he was actually trying to get find a cure for it. Who was? Trump. Trump didn't give a rat's uh, ass about a cure. Trump did not give a rat's ass about a cure. Trump was telling people to pump Lysol into their body. Their body. Trump is a moron. Trump doesn't know anything. They're all about morons. Medicine. Well, Trump did not take any medical advice from anyone to heart, um, and probably still doesn't to this day. I'm sure Trump's had friends that have died of it. He doesn't care. Herman Cain. Herman Cain. Great point. Yeah, he doesn't care well about mask wearing. I mean, let's 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 talk the truth here. He's the one who got all of his followers to disparage people who are wearing masks to protect other people. That's why there's such a problem with mask wearing here. Yeah. Oh yeah, I wore a mask up until probably uh four months ago and in where i'm at in lovely texas um was looked upon as a absolute freak um in fact i started wearing a mask when it first came out in early march of of 2020 and nobody would even look at me and that's because of trump uh, i wore the mask anytime i went out other than that if i was in my house i never wore a mask just only when i went out that no, way i no. knew i was safe Right. Well, we're not stupid. Yeah. We don't. We don't. I also didn't wear a mask in my car alone either. Well, I wonder, well, it depends if I was with family or friends. Go ahead, Joy. I wonder what would have happened when Trump, when this first came out, if he would have taken it seriously and said, "Hey, we've got this virus. It's dangerous. Let's everyone, you know, calm down." I get they didn't want to alert everyone. Okay, now we found out it's it's airborne. So hey, let's all wear a mask and I feel like if he would have promoted that his followers yeah maybe they would have been making fun of democrats for not wearing a mask it and you're right it shouldn't have been politicized but it was you know mm -hmm. oh it absolutely became a political issue i know everybody's telling me i'm wearing a mask right now well no shit. i know <laughs> i'm not doing it to protect myself from covid <laughs> uh, but yeah joy you bring up a great point i mean i think trump could have possibly even won again if he had Who handled yeah, if yeah. he had handled things, oh, he, things would have the right won, way. he would have won easily if if he would have managed COVID better and if he would have not uh you know shit on the idea of mail on ballots. Oh yeah. That was that was in the bag. Yeah. yeah that was a fumble. No, I don't think Trump would have won. Mm, I did. Well based on those two factors at least. Oh, that's it. Simple. When he won the first time, the odds were so far against him, it's not even funny. Hillary Clinton was supposed to be the shoe in. And Trump won. That upset the Democrats. That's why they tried to impeach the man before he even said, I do. That man hadn't even taken office yet when they started the impeaching process. Because no, he was didn't. not supposed to have won that election. It, it should have been Hillary Clinton. They talked about it, but nobody started impeachment hearings. I'm sorry. That's why Hillary Clinton and the Clinton campaign came up with the fake dossier. What's your question, Rob? First of all, I, I need to apologize for my voice modulation. Uh, but Jeff, uh, can you tell me um, what do dendritic cells do in the body? I'm not a doctor. Exactly. Like 
some brain stuff. There's an epistemology crisis going on in the nation. And you have people wielding democracy who want to use it. You want to set policy and ignore the people who are trying to protect them. And that is a constitutional issue. But I just want to point out something. You don't know what a dendritic cell is. You don't know how your immune system is. And that's a problem in a democracy. Well, no, that, Thank you all. I disagree with you there, Rob. I know how my immune system works. Other people no, no. you don't. But I know how you just mine told works. me you don't. No, you asked me what I thought about certain cells, and I told you I'm not a doctor, but I know how my body responds to different things. If you don't know how a dendritic cell picks up pieces of a virus and presents it to your lymphatic system, then no, you don't. You can, you that's your opinion, Rob. Out. But I can't tell you, Rob, I, you've been I sick more than I have been. I people who have been left behind in this country. I try to sympathize with people like David on a parking lot with 30 people that have been described as uh, runaways from a care home. I feel for them. They're going through a lot. They've been through a lot in their lives. Everyone has. But running a, a country is not a soccer match. Keeping people alive is not a soccer match, and it does not run on belief. It runs on what can be proved scientifically. To threaten to jail those people is irresponsible. Now, maybe that's not what you're advocating, but you're ignoring the fact that decisions have to be made and then you'd be made on the science. Okay, let me ask this question, Rob. Did you sign a piece of paper saying it's their responsibility to keep you alive, or is that your job? Whose job is it to keep you alive, Rob? Government and politicians, or you? It starts with myself. but I well, It, it starts extra. and ends at yourself. No. It's not the <laughs> government's responsibility to keep you alive. That is your job. If I'm walking around with a communicable disease that can harm other people, that is my responsibility. Exactly. It's also my responsibility yeah. to my fellow countrymen to reach out to experts whose jobs it is, whose lives have been dedicated to that research. Like I said, that is your alive. responsibility. It's not the government. Is it a policeman's responsibility to keep you safe and uphold the law? Granted, well, that's it's his job to uphold the law. Right it's now. my job to keep me safe. Oh, protect and serve. Oh, what about His when you drive a car law on the road? Officer Jeff? Is strictly to enforce the law. When it's you're my in job two to keep tons me of safe. speeding metal down the highway, do you rely on experts, the ones that built it, the ones that built the road, the ones that put the signs up on that road, the nope. ones that designed the policy to keep everyone safe on that road? No, because I know. Right from it's wrong. your job to maintain the damn car. But when you've it's got wheels flying off and killing people, know right that's a wrong. problem. It's also my job to know right from wrong. And I also know my 9,000-pound truck sitting in my driveway is a lethal weapon. It's my exactly. responsibility to make sure that 9,000-pound vehicle stays in control at all times. Exactly. And if I can't do that, I do shouldn't that, be driving. There. You go to a mechanic if you don't know enough about the car. I work on my own vehicles. That's fine. Well, Rob, but do you know what a dendritic like... cell does in the immune system? No, he doesn't no. know. And it seems like he has an answer for everything. So unfortunately, no, I don't have an answer for everything. I'm just a human being that knows how my body reacts. Right. Well, that's great. I don't he know can't... how other people's bodies react, but I know how mine reacts. He All can't... I need to worry about. But Jeff, yeah. let me ask you a question. Okay, let's say you're working in an office. Let's just pretend you're working in an office. You know, and you feel like your immune system's pretty good. Uh, one of your coworkers has, you know, diabetes, let's say. And let's say you have an irresponsible coworker who comes in with COVID. You know, what measures should be in place to protect the other employees 
from getting COVID. You know, I think that's what we're trying to get at is protecting people. Okay. You have to have some rules in place to protect people. Okay. To your question, common sense would say, okay, if I have diabetes or a coworker has diabetes Mm -hmm. and we know somebody's contacted COVID, the proper thing is make sure we keep the area sanitized and we wear masks. Okay. That's common sense. Okay. Especially if somebody with diabetes, because that makes their immune system that much weaker. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's good. We can agree on that. But what if that person who has a COVID starts saying, my rights, I don't want to wear a mask. And, uh, and well, I think, Okay, let me ask this question. Am I just an employee or am I the owner of the company? Hmm. It depends on which position, depends on what the response is. Okay, let's put you as the owner. And now the liabilities on your shoulders. I tell that person point blank. You, you're right. Okay. Your body, your responsibilities, my company, have a nice day. Okay. I'm not going to have you jeopardize everybody's job. Especially when we know we got people who have diabetes and their immune system is already knocked down enough. I'm not going to have you risk their life because you won't be stupid and come in here without a mask. That's reasonable, you know. Now, and as I an employee... I'd have to listen to what the company sets out as their guidelines, and I'd have to follow them. Okay. Even if I like them or dislike them, if I want to keep the job, I'll follow the policies. If I don't like the job, I can go find another job. That's reasonable. You know, but I think what we had is a lot of people not wanting to be reasonable. And I also agree if I'm a pro masker and I'm outside and see someone without a mask, I also agree that. I probably shouldn't just go up to that person saying, where's your mask? And, you know, so there are two sides to the coin. Well, I look at it this way. If you're outside and somebody's not wearing a mask, my biggest, my first question is, am I going to risk not knowing if they even have COVID to go up and approach them about the mask? No, I'm not. I'm going to keep my distance just as a precautionary measure because I don't know if they got it or not. I'm not going to go up there and find out. Exactly. In the flip of the coin, if someone is wearing a mask and then someone without a mask comes and yells at them, I think I think that's what we've had a lot in this country of the yelling at each other um, and making judgments so quickly. That's really dividing us. Oh, well, we call those Kins and Karens. <laughs> yeah, Kins and Karens. Phil, did you have something to say? I thought I heard you. Oh, I probably lost my train of thought already, huh? Oh, sorry. And then I also think maybe J3C1, did you have something to say? I I do. Um, I I think we forget about the time we were in. When I used to go to the grocery store, I'm immunocompromised, so I always had to wear a mask. If I saw somebody who was not wearing a mask and who could potentially kill me, that's a problem for me. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You don't have a right to come and try to kill me. So what I would do is I would steer very clear of them. Maybe they took that, took offense to that. But I really didn't care. Because if you don't care enough to care about other people, why do I care about you? It's just, it's just common courtesy in a society. And I see people now who have masks on, and there's various reasons for that. Um, and I see people making fun of them. The convoy people are constantly harassing people who wear masks. That's not right. freedom. Right. You don't That's even know what that person's thinking about. Freedom. Like, That's all. No, along your question, Joy, I lost my sister due to COVID because of somebody in her office doing exactly just that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry for your loss. And as well. horrible. And she called the, the, the office and said, my husband got COVID. I'm coming to work. And why? I don't know. The boss didn't say, well, you, your husband's got COVID. You're not coming to work because you've been exposed to it. Stay home. She didn't. She brought it in and nine people caught COVID from her. But she came in the office without a mask. And it ended up killing my sister. So I've seen both sides. Yikes. And do I agree with it? 
yeah, I understand people have a freedom of choice. I fought for those rights for people when I was in the military. But at the same time, there's that freedom of choice does have a fine line where you don't want to cross. If it affects the lives of other people, that's where your freedom of choice stops. Because well, I think what we what we need to do at this point is start promoting healthy um, lifestyle choices. Seventy-eight uh, percent of people who passed away from COVID were overweight or obese. Um, I think that is a huge. If we have any pandemic at all right now, that's what it is. Um, well, the, the problem with that but, is some people you can't control that because it's something wrong with their body. That's a very small percentage, extremely small percentage of because people. Because I know women know have thyroid it. issues that can't lose weight. You can get on medication and, and control. Well, all uh, yes, they got medication for it and stuff, but the fact that it's still a problem and that's something they can't control. Yeah, but again, that's a very small percentage of the population. Um, I've been overweight before after having children and was able to lose 53 pounds. Um, and I have I have Crohn's disease, so it's it's doable. People can do it. Um, it's just a matter of intrinsic motivation. But I think what's happened now is a lot of people have been able to adopt that motivation because of COVID, and knowing the statistics, and knowing that primarily people who are overweight are the ones that passed away or were severely, um, you know, their lives were implicated by it. So well, hopefully, my that's... sister wasn't overweight, so that she doesn't well, fit that was... criteria. Uh, well, absolutely. I understand that. Um, but I'm just basing this off of facts. Um, yeah. I mean, I agree. That is something we need to address. And you can put the weight in, you know, mental health, kind of the, I think we're all kind of, a lot of people I know are on the journey of learning about mental health. And, you know, I think we've stressed ourselves out in this country, you know, to the point where, yeah, people are getting sick and and I do like promoting more education about health, what to eat, you know, and I agree. I think we need more of that in this country of uh, focusing on well-being. Yeah, just oh. total, total well-being, not just physical. Okay, with you both yeah. saying that, I got a question for you both. What do you think about this new bill that is on the Senate floor right now about their so-called gun control? Step in the right direction. Uh doesn't go as far as I'd like it to be, but hey, you know, if it takes more kids dying to get at least a little progress. Okay. okay. But Phil, do you understand more people die of other ways other than gun control, other than guns? And a gun will never shoot somebody. Hold on a second, Jeff. Are you are you just simply talking about murder? No, he said other ways. So, you know, it's a misdirection. The highest, are you talking about yes. unnatural death or natural death? The highest death rate out of all Americans is blunt force trauma. It's not by a gun. It's blunt force trauma. So are they going to start cutting people's hands off? Uh, hold on a second. I think that might have been debunked because yeah, I've that's, seen that's some absolutely debate. Been debunked. It's, it's guns. Uh, I think one of them was someone stating something about hammers being um, a, a tool used for murders more than guns, which is absolutely nah, right. I look at it this way. A murderer, it doesn't matter what if they're going to come, if they're going to kill somebody, whatever they can get their hands on is what they're going to use. It's a they go with whatever's closest. It could be a car accident. It could be a hammer. But when you look at the data on gun violence, uh, yeah, it's magazine capacity and ease of access that, that factors in. I don't understand the misdirection here. Like, oh, what are the other the other ways people die? You don't have to be an insurrectionist to understand or believe in your Second Amendment. Phil, I completely agree with you, what you were just saying. Um, it's absolutely, it absolutely has to do with, with the high capacity magazines um, and, and the way that these, let's just face it, these young white males are able to obtain guns so quickly. Um, it, you don't have to have a mental past, if you will, to, to see right through it. I think, especially with the young people, social media platforms need to be held somewhat liable or culpable um, that kid, the last one in Uvalde, he was online discussing it for days before he decided to go through with it. I think that it all goes hand well, in no, hand. The, the, the sad part about that is his own grandmother, the first person he killed, contacted the police and told them what he was doing. Why don't the police do something 
then. Right. Well, that whole police department was was fucked. Yeah, exactly. And they still are. So I, I, I agree with them opening up uh, juvenile records. I agree with that. And it, it should have always been that way. You shouldn't lock off once before they turn 18. You don't know what their past was. But I can put a gun on a table, have it fully loaded. That gun will never kill a single person. It's the person behind the gun that kills. Right. Well, like I said the other night, I own two handguns. I have a revolver and a 9 millimeter. It doesn't mean I'm ever going to use them, but I'm also not going to go plan to shoot any, any place up. Because you know right from wrong. And it's not just the schools. Um, I think if we secure all schools to a point where no one could ever access them, then someone will just pick a playground or a mall or well, wherever. My understanding is that school was supposed to have locked doors, but why didn't it? That's neither here or there. We're never going to know that, unfortunately. Um, my children, before they started homeschooling, which, by the way, somebody commented the other night about me homeschooling them. I don't homeschool them. They do a homeschool program. Um, but their school was, their schools were very secure. So I don't know what happened at that school. I'm not sure if it's because uh, the whole thing was a screw up. Yeah. But just back to the actual, just, um, the gun control, um, point in general, I don't necessarily, we're not necessarily saying that obviously the second amendment should stand as is and always should. Well, I think what they need to add to that bill is a mandatory gun class. Oh, absolutely. Well, here in the state of Texas, you can go buy a gun at a gun show with no ID. I mean, people don't even ID you around here. And no. you can go and you can walk around with it. No problem. No class needed. But look how many nothing. people in Texas own guns. Mandatory class. Mandatory background check. It needs, absolutely. Mandatory, mandatory class. Jump through. Yes. Lots of, lots of, lots of hoops to jump through. But, you know. There, 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 okay. There's lots of this and that. I, I, I grew up around lots guns. Not clothes. once did I ever play with a gun as a toy. That's a Band-Aid right now. It, well, it is. It's just a temporary Band-Aid. Okay, Jeff, you said you're prior military. Don't you have to qualify every year with your weapon? Every six months. Okay. Well, why aren't we doing that with regular citizens? Good question. Why aren't they? Exactly. You know, why is an 18-year-old not allowed to buy a cigarette, but they can buy a gun? But see, that one I disagree with. I don't think you should be able to buy a gun until you're 21. Right. Okay. Be a so there we go. That's reasonable. You can't vote until you're 21. You can't drink until you're 21. Why should you be able to buy a gun earlier than 21? And parents should not be able to buy a gun for a kid for a kid that's 16, 17, or 18. Oh, absolutely. My my son just turned 13, and my ex-husband bought him a gun. For what? He's a child. He doesn't hunt. Yeah. My ex-husband and doesn't hunt, but he's well, in the military. No offense you and have, but the is he taking old. a gun class? Uh, no, just took him Why to the not? range. I don't know. Good question. I have no no clue. Took him my to the range. My niece and my nephews all know how to go, shoot guns, but I also made sure they went through an NRA certified gun class to know right from wrong, when to pull it, when not to pull it, how to put it away, when to put it away, and everything else. Mm-hmm. So they would not be a statistic in the news. Right. I think it's, but it's, it's, it's more of the mass shootings, the AR-15s, they're military grade weapons. They need to stay AR-15 the is not a military grade weapon. That's just it. You know what an AR-15 designed, is? It was designed for an airline military armory. That's all right. it is. It was it's designed just a classification. It, it's just a name on a gun. Well, I know it's a rifle. I'm, I'm well aware. It's a single shot rifle. You pull the trigger once, you get one round. Mm-hmm. Right. Just like what a pistol. The, what about the high capacity magazine that comes along with it? I can do as much damage with a five-round clip as somebody can do with a 30-round clip. Well, that's because right. your magazine doesn't mean nothing. Can really? On that, on that, Jeff, real Absolutely, quick. please uh, do. Yeah. I, I mean, when, when I looked into the assault weapons ban and, you know, wrote a you know, just brief little undergrad paper about it, it seemed like, you know, assault weapons ban effective a bit. Um, it did target guns with a specific aesthetic. And what it boils down to is, yeah, it's magazine capacity. If you look at Virginia Tech, that, there was, that was two handguns. Um, we're, we're just trying to put Band-Aids on a huge systemic. It, and thing. the problem is it's, so, a, it's such yeah, a big topic that is, uh, yeah. nobody's ever going to see eye to eye. And let me answer Black Bear real quick. Black Bear, 
An AR-15 is not a military gun. What the military uses is what they call an M-16 or an M-14, which is a modified, fully automatic weapon. An AR-15 is a single shot, single pull. It is not an assault rifle. There's a difference. There's a hand Look gun. it up. Yeah. Okay, Jeff, but they were designed to be a lightweight rifle in the military and to allow infantry men to carry more ammunition. That's just, that's what it was designed for. How many, how many rounds do you think I put in my M14? Or my M4 know. when I was in the military? I had 30 round clips for those. But do you what see me walking around town with one? No. What, what branch were you in? United States Navy. What was your MOS? I was a boss's mate. Okay. Did you retire or did you just get out? I did 16 years. Early retirement or no? No, I got tired of watching kids die. Gotcha. And I, I'm, and I'm serious. I was watching kids right out of high school being shipped on my body bags. I got tired of it because they weren't ready to go be put in position in, in circumstances that they were in. Right. Well, we allow 18 year olds in the military because uh, of, unfortunately, of yes, manpower alone. And the military, because they are at 18, allow them to drink at 18, which is, I don't agree with either. They don't do that anymore. Those days Well, they over. used to. I don't know yeah, if they, they still do or to. not. No, they don't. But I didn't agree with that either. I know I know they still let them smoke cigarettes, but um, the drinking thing, was that's been over for a while. Which conflict? I was in the Persian Gulf during the Stark Iraqi incident. The Antietam incident, what led up to Desert Storm and Iraqi freedom. I went in the military in 1985 and got out in 2001. Yes, any gun can be made fully automatic. Just, Absolutely. If you know what you're doing. But an AR-15 is not an assault rifle. My 30 odd 6 will put more rounds downfield and do more damage than an AR-15 will ever do. And it's a single shot bolt action. But one round from my 30 out six will go through three people. That AR-15 won't. My 30 right. out six will, will fire through a Chevy engine block. That AR-15 won't. Hunting rifles are more powerful than an AR-15. That's true. I just think it's the easy accessibility. So that's, that's it, the main it thing. It is, unfortunately. That's the main thing that I think that um, anyone that's not a staunch GOP follower wants is just a you little bit more. You don't have to more... be a GOP follower to understand right from wrong with guns. Well, unfortunately. It's the way you're raised. <laughs> I, I like the whole circular argument when people talk about guns and everyone's like, yeah, common sense. Uh, common sense. But it, it, if you think about it, Phil, it is common so sense. We actually, we actually do agree on this. All right, let's just keep going in circles. There. Yeah, I think if we all had common sense, we wouldn't have any issues probably on anything. But that's just not the way. Well, no, 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 no. If you think about it, Phil, it is common sense. Well, of course it is. But that common, common sense, sense is going to ask you, are you actually going to point a gun at somebody just to point a gun at somebody? No, that makes no sense. Why would you? And the question is, how do we? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Phil, go ahead. Yeah, I also wouldn't want to be able to go to a gun show and buy one from a private vendor. Uh, uh, exactly. To be able to do that either. Yeah. I've gone to gun shows to buy guns and if a vendor says, well, you can buy the gun right now and doesn't ask for my ID, I walk away from the table. Because well, that's, that's not the weird. vendor I want to deal with. <laughs> not most of them do that. Well, I don't want to deal with that vendor because my, my next question to me is, where's this gun stolen from because you don't want nobody knowing about the gun transaction. Mm -hmm. That tells me the gun's stolen. I don't want no part of a stolen gun. Yeah, gun shows me because to stop. I'm the one that goes to jail for it, not him. Because I'm the one that's caught with it. No, thank you. Well, and how do we get these common sense? Like Jeff, you're talking about some common sense things. How do we get these into law? You know that both parties can agree on some of these common sense measures. You and get right, we're never going to prevent it from ever happening, but we have to get, do something. You get people from both sides with open minds. You sit down, basically do a round table. And you listen to everybody with an open mind instead of going in there with your own ideas and not going to budge. 
if you actually go in there with an open mind and listen to everything on both sides that they're looking for, in the middle is a common ground that everybody can agree to yeah. that yeah. would make yeah, perfect laws. Perfect world, so that's and never going to happen. And you hold politicians to account on the task of, you know, the lobbies, gun laws. In the comments, I see Freedom 2A. Chicago, more shooting in a day. Look at the gun laws they have. Uh, I think Ch Chicago... Chicago's got the strictest gun laws, and look how many shootings they have every day. If you let me finish, the per capita they're ranking in this country is something like 28th most deadly. Um, you know, St. Louis being number one. Uh, my native Baltimore, number two. You know, a lot of Midwest states are in those top ten. So, like, the whole... Uh, think Chicago bad, but yeah, there's a lot of murders there, but per capita, 28th. So, it's a, it's a big thing. Absolutely. I agree, Phil. 100%. I think that a lot of people will see a statistic, they don't cross check it, and then they run with it. And that's the problem with the convoy, for instance. Um, uh, they hear one thing and they roll with it, and it's just. They not don't check facts. Right. That's the same way with mainstream media. They're told something, they run it, and then later on down the road, when they've proven wrong, they got to backtrack and apologize. Had had they checked in information to begin with, then what to ran it. No, I think that happens less than you would think. I think it happens I mean, more than the, what you think. Uh, I think the news, well, the news is there to sensationalize stories, and we know that. The news that. is nothing but drama. Well, all news is nothing but drama. Um, yes, and all the reputations the and integrity is equal. There's no difference. They're all the same. Yeah. Yeah, there is no fake news or real news or any of that or mainstream media. Or, it's all it's all there to be sensationalized. That is the point. Um, but the only reason they're called mainstream media is because that's what everybody watches. ABC, NBC, MSNBC. That's all it is. That's why they're called mainstream media. Right. Well, what's happened now with, with the Trumpers is that they have completely, I mean, they don't even watch Fox News anymore or Newsmax. <laughs> and so, so now cool. they're relying solely on truth.com or whatever, whatever Rumble or what, whatever they're on now. And so or, they're relying on social media platforms and someone's opinion over fact. Well, see, that's one good thing about the streamers. As long as they don't put out the wrong narrative as they're streaming if they actually stream what they're seeing what you're seeing and they're seeing you can't go wrong because video don't lie unless they go in and modify it and then you can tell they modified it i don't read into it too much no that's all that's what i like about the main streamers i watch what they stream and i make my own opinion on what i'm seeing right and, and that's probably well, why streamers. we all started watching them to see what was really going on for our own eyes. That's why I watched them to see, okay, what is really going in in Ottawa, you know, instead of what the news is saying. And I went and saw what was going on, you know, and there were totally different stories. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure if there was a new story on the convoy here, it would be the same thing, but um, it's pretty easy to decipher what's going on when you, when you watch a live stream. So, um, that's that way with anything, I think. Well, J3, were you going to say something? I was just going to inquire what um, what live streams Jeff listens to, because I, I'm always up for a new live stream to watch. Oh, let's see. I watch WYSIWYG. I watch First Responders Media. I watch Eric the Mechanic. I watch the G's. I watch Saznak. I used to watch Oreo until I saw who he was for who he was. So are you pro convoy then? No. Okay. So you're just watching it as self interest. Like no, I I'm not pro or con. I, I'm the type of person that's right down the middle. Mm -hmm. I like it both sides. And then I make my my assessment or my judgment off of what I see from both sides. So what is the both sides of the streams that you just mentioned? What's the other side? Oh, uh, it'd be like Antifa videos. I watch them just to get an idea Recorded why they do who? what they do. But who records those videos? I talk to Telescope all the time just to understand his side of things. 
and me and him actually have good conversations. But we're both going at it with open minds. I, I think so what live the- streams do you watch that are that are? I haven't other- watched any of the live streams for them in a while. I've been more busy taking care of stuff in real life. Mm-hmm. Because real life is a little bit more important than what's on a computer. Well, we all like free speech and uh, you know good dialogue and. Uh... I'm I'm personally not a big fan of the way big tech kind of generally handles censorship. I I think they're kind of correct, course correct for uh, uh, kind of earlier failures a little bit. But well, that's one thing I can I can uh, empathize or sympathize, I should say, with the, the convoy on in terms of it's free speech, free dialogue, freedom from censorship. Don't push people further into their echo chambers. All that good stuff. I agree. So- uh, speaking of streamers, this is a little off topic, but does any, has anyone followed any, and I was following this before the Russian Ukraine war, but, um, does anyone follow any Russian streamers or Ukrainian streamers? Um, there's a few out there that are pretty good. And again, you're getting to see what it's like. Um, you know, there were two Russian ones I would follow, and this is, you know, for the last few years. And, for me, I felt like it opened up my eyes to what it was like to live in Russia because they're, you know, just ordinary people living in Russia. And, you know, I got to kind of learn about their medical system, you know, kind of how much it is to live. And um, so I was just curious if anyone has has watched any of those. Well, right now I'm watching Russia because they've got two veterans in custody that are about to take to court and charged with war crimes. And if they get the ruling they want, they're going to be put to death. And I know what the American com- what the American people are going to do about that. So that one I'm watching very closely. Sadly, no. As soon as I started following the Russia and Ukraine situation closely enough to, to watch the live streams and the video, uh, emotionally, it you know it, it got to me hard enough that I. I almost put the blinders on, so I, I come for the low hanging fruit here in Convoy Land. I I was the same way, Phil. I was um, watching it feverishly for a while there, and I had come across um, a Ukrainian streamer who was restreaming other people's streams. So I'm not quite I'm not, I don't remember the name, um, but I I too got to a point where I just was sickened by it. I couldn't take it anymore. Too heavy. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I'm watching what's going on with the two American veterans because unfortunately if they are put to death russia just declared war with united states of america so i'm watching that very closely because that's what we don't need no it's not i mean they got two americans and one what was he turkish and then two other from another country, all in custody. And I mean, they're talking unfortunately, I think crime. it was something they probably prepared for. Um, and going into that, I mean, it was a choice that they made to participate. Unfortunately, they were captured. Um, well, but- Russia's classifying them as um, mercenaries. Right. And unfortunately, with them being American citizens, if Russia does get what they want, which is a guilty on war crimes, they will be put to death by firing squad. And that will de- that will be Russia's declaration of war against the United States of America. And I don't want to see that. No, neither do I. I but I do think that they were prepared for that as far as the, the soldiers are concerned. I'm more concerned about, personally, the basketball player. Um, she wasn't prepared for that. Um, and I, I just think I think that's a travesty. Those two men went, went there to, to fight. Um, she went there to entertain, and I, I obviously she doesn't have death um, looming over her, but she has years of of confinement in Russia looming over her for for something I don't even think she even did. I don't think she did either. I think there's an inf- interesting conversation you can have about people that would go over there that maybe are uh, current or well not current obviously, but former military that spent you know approaching 20 years in Middle Eastern conflicts that they didn't agree with. And then they felt this is a just war that I I feel a call to action to. Um, I'm not going to 
editorialize on, you know. No, they said why they were going over there. It's an interesting take. Like, uh, yeah, hey, this is actually a just war, not not the one that I was thrown into. No, when they were going over, they did a um, a news conference prior to leaving saying that the reason they're going over there is because they don't believe in what Russia is doing to Ukraine and Ukraine needs the help. So they were going to go over and help. Oh, no, I commend them for going to help. Absolutely. If I didn't also have children, I, but at the same time, I condemn them because they got caught. They should have yeah. known better. <laughs> that's I, I'm that's sorry, that's being in the military, say. they should have known better. Yeah, that's easy to say, but you're not over. Well, I just know the type of training they went through because one was an army veteran, the other one was a marine veteran. Because of the training they go through, they should have known them to get caught. But that's the first thing to teach you is not how to get caught. So they must have forgot to, they forgot to train. Exactly. Big, big mistake. And I think this also, you know, when we talk about Russia, there's so much going on in America that we're not agreeing with. But I think we all can take a moment and remember how lucky we are to be Americans, to live in a country where we can come and debate and say Trump sucks, Biden sucks without being put in prison, you know, and um, I wish more of the people fighting amongst each other would remember that and try to come together. Well, to be honest with you, I don't understand why there's pe people are against each other. I really don't. Yeah. Because if, if you think about it, we all have common ground somewhere. So why not go to that common ground and spread out from there and work together to get back what we're losing? And that's this country. Work together. Bravado, ego? Who knows? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm looking at it from a military point of view because I've had to work with every branch of the military there is. And a lot of people don't realize inside the military branches, there's egos against other branches. Yeah. But when it came down to it, we actually put those egos aside and did what we had to do as a team to get the mission accomplished. The American people need to do the same thing. We do. We do. But the differences to... aside. Yeah. Well, I think once Trump is dead... Then that will it has nothing to do with Trump or has nothing to do with mm, Biden. It has it to do absolutely with people. Does. My father is a 22-year Navy veteran. He retired and was on um, nukes. And um, when I was growing up, I've always... Salute to him. Knew... Huh? Salute to him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was growing up, I always knew he was a Republican. Um, I grew up in a very patriotic family. Um, but since Trump has been around in the political realm i and my dad was one of my best friends and i am unable to have a conversation with him now um and it is because of trump 100 percent. it has absolutely nothing to do with the republican party in in general it has 100 percent to do with him and it will not change until he's dead so okay, let me answer this question from old age and i'm not trying to ask this disrespectful towards you or your dad oh you're fine why would you let one person destroy a relationship with your dad good question is it is which one's more important that one idiot or the relationship i've asked him that and he said he's not his views will not be swayed and okay what so, about yours um i actually was like i said before was a pretty decent fan of trump's economic policy when he first came out and was even to the point where I was going to vote for him in um, the first election. So I, I like I said, I was the first step. Oh, I have. I, I mean, I talk to my dad. It's just very surface now. We can't have our, our uh, daily discussions or our weekly discussions like we Your used deep to. discussions. Yeah, and I miss that because- um, Tell him. My dad, oh, I have. I have. Um, my grandpa moved in with him. He's also a, a, a major Trump fan as well. So. It's 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 hard for me to um, to continue it, but so now it's surface, and hopefully it'll change. But that's all I've got.
Oh, see, I grew up in a very dominant Republican family. Mm -hmm. And when I was asked when I turned 18 what side I was going to go to, I told my mom point blank, I'm not going to either side. I'm going to stay right in the middle. I'm going to look at who the candidates are, what they can bring to help me and everybody in America, and that's what I'm going to go for. I don't care what the parties want. I'm looking at the candidates and what they bring to the table. And that's well, why I stay in the middle. Jeff, then you are one in a million because most most people don't feel that way. Um, well, like I tell everybody, the best president this country has ever had, the sad part, got him killed. Mm. And that president was a Democrat. And that was right. JFK. Absolutely. Well, he was the president of the people. That's why. Exactly. And him doing what he did got him killed. Because he was actually for the people. Right. And that's what got him killed. Yeah. I'm, and that was, the best, that was the best president we ever had. I'm and sorry. he was a Democrat. Emerson, Emerson, can I direct it a little? I don't know. Jeff's making you know points that aren't making me uh, get super triggered. So, um, But hey, Jeff, when, can maybe you tell me a little bit more about uh, abortion. Yeah, I'll, get, I'll get real triggered there. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Let's, know. Do let's, go, let's go that route. What do you want to know? What, what's my belief on it? Yeah. It's not birth control. Yeah, if you're using it for birth control, keep your damn zipper zipped. Now, if you were raped or molested, your life screwed up enough with the rape or the molestation. You don't need to look at it every day. So... But at the same time, that's up to the individual whether they want to go that route or if they want to be able to still have the child or put the child up for adoption. That's their choice. Yeah, I got this whole man thing not trying to have dominion over. And my biggest pet peeve is these women who go to these abortion clinics, don't tell the man that got them pregnant about it until after the fact and say, oh, by the way, you go for the abortion. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. I helped make that child. Where was my say-so in that child? It takes two. You can't do it by yourself unless you go to a lab. So he's just as guilty of creating that child as she is. So that responsibility is on both of them. And if they both don't agree to it, they need to sit down and work something out. That's he's on both of common ground for both of them. Yeah, accidents happen, you know. I, I understand that. The, yeah, I, I. So as a woman, I don't, I don't think the majority of women that are getting abortions like it. Just gonna put that out there. Um, I don't think they're using it. Up their body the rest of their let me, life. Let me finish. Let me finish. I let you finish. I don't think that they're using it as a form of birth control whatsoever. Um, like Phil said, accidents happen. Um, a, a vast majority are sexual assaults or uh, in, incest, um, that sort of thing. Uh, we're not going to know those numbers because of HIPAA. We're just not. Um, all, all medical data, unless it's in a controlled environment, is usually not shared. Um, and most women that go into an abortion clinic are not going to say a word about being raped because it's embarrassing. It's extremely embarrassing. It's embarrassing that you were in that position, whatever happened. It's embarrassing having an abortion. Okay, let um, me ask you this question. Do you think guys don't get raped? Um, yeah, I actually um I know Don't laugh it up, Phil. Laugh it up. No, no, I know I know a man. Listen, listen, absolutely men get raped. I know a man that was out he was he was young, he was probably about 19. He was at a hot tub one night. This is back in the 80s, and they were drinking. A husband and wife approached him. Um, and they all started drinking together and he went into their home to continue drinking, passed out on the couch. And in the morning, I'm guessing with his morning wood, the wife was on top of him having sex with him. Without um, his knowledge. So that's absolutely rape. He did not give his permission. And uh, subsequently, the, the husband was watching as well. Um, so men and women can absolutely. It's um, a two way street. Yeah, 100%. But a man can't get pregnant. Uh, I, I understand a man can't get pregnant, but rape is rape is rape is rape. Hey, G Gabby, let me ask your opinion on something that I, I'm i also kind of I'm personally struggling to think about how 
how I feel about it. There's a comedian out there. I don't know his name, but he describes a scene where like he's like 15 or 16, and is at like some like outdoor party, and there's a woman that's 55 years old, like hanging out on the balcony, and invites him up, and he's like, "Yeah, I he's heard great. this." Like, yeah, it was great. Like, I, you know, what are you saying? I'm a victim. Like, it was great. I had so much fun. And sounds like George Carlin. No, no, it's a, no, a new guy. modern comedian. But it's it's an interesting discussion uh, as far as uh, what you know was this willing 16 year old boy, you know, if you want to use that word, uh, assaulted in that instance. Um, yeah. So as a mother of a 13 year old son. Um, I 100% believe that he did not have the mental capacity to understand the ramifications of what that was. Um, it's just the same thing with teachers having sex with their students. Primarily, they're female. Um, some of the students are 18, but most of them are between the ages of 13 and 17. And that is rape. You don't have an informed decision at 15 years old to understand what your actions, what implications your actions are going to have later on. You just don't. So um, you know, you're saying they shouldn't be able to buy guns either at that age? No, come on, you're going. Right, right. Far um, you know, our, our brains are not fully developed until we're 25. I don't think a lot of people know that or really even care. But uh, you know, some, some people are not it developed. It depends on your upbringing. Oh, yeah, I mean, environment, nurture over nature, that's another subject. Right. Um, but saying how you touch on a subject that is very near and dear to me is these kids that are in schools that get molested by teachers. Right. That's what I was just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need protection for those children. Because every day you hear more and more teachers are being arrested for this act or that act against the student. Yeah. And a lot of those teachers get passed around the school districts, you know, which you wouldn't think happens, but it does. You know, they get in trouble here and they just go to a different school district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like just like the priesthood with, with you know, with Catholics. Oh, well, that, Boy Scouts. See, I was a Boy Scout for years. I was also a Scout leader. And when all the incidences against the Boy Scouts came out, it pissed me off to no end. Because I asked myself, how in the hell can a parent do that to another child because leaders and boy scouts are parents usually well they are they usually have one or two of their sons in the troop that they're being a leader of so how could you do that to another kid who knows a lot of molesters have children a exactly. lot of molesters molest their own children oh i agree I was just watching a documentary on the Philippines. There's a lot of remote villages where the parents molest their children on camera on the dark web. It's yeah. very interesting. I'll have to find out what the. I'll never watch it because that's classified child pornography. Oh no, they didn't. They don't show anything on there. But, but you know what I'm saying. It's, it's a Showtime series. It's a documentary. It just yeah. delves into the dark web. It's extremely interesting. But it happens everywhere. I think it either has. I mean, for in their in their instance, I'm not obviously advocating it because it's disgusting. But they did it for money because I don't understand kids. how any adult can do that to any kid. Period. Well, it's, well they're probably Democrats and not you know like far right people projecting their. I'll have to agree with you there, Phil. <laughs> no offense, but I, I, I I'll have to agree with you now, and they're Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, a playbook. That's like a playbook. another good example, Phil, that you something you brought up is it, like everybody knows about spouse abuse and it's always the woman that gets abused do you realize men get abused just as much but they're afraid to say anything because who's going to believe a man getting his ass beat by a lady yeah. it does not happen just as much but it does happen a little bit of disparity in numbers there yes, yes. it's not that far behind them believe it or not as a fireman I've gone to a lot of calls where the woman's beating the guy's ass literally to a bloody pole. Those are just the calls you get. There's a lot more of the violence going there's on. There's a lot of calls that don't get reported for. because the guys are too embarrassed. Who wants, as a man, who wants to call police and say, hey, I just got my ass beat by a woman? It's embarrassing. It doesn't happen at the same frequency. Not as a, no, I don't, but it still happens. 
Well, uh, yeah, Jeff, that's like, the same on both sides of the street. Jeff, like you just said, a man doesn't call because it's embarrassing. A woman doesn't tell or speak of themselves being raped. Oh, I know. I deal with it or, as a fireman. Or having an abortion because it's embarrassing. I've dealt with both as a fireman. I've dealt with women who've been raped, and I've dealt with women who've had an abortion that's gone wrong. And I, and I hate that. I really do. And at the same time, it messes up the woman's body to the point where if she wanted kids in the future, nine times out of ten, she can't because something went wrong during the abortion. Unless it's done by a licensed physician. That's false, too. That's yeah. false, too. Yeah. You didn't let me finish. I said, unless done by a licensed physician. Okay. There's a okay. lot of abortions out there that are being done by home doctors who never went to medical school that watched videos on it. Women aren't as stupid as you think, Jeff. We're, we're not yeah. going out to home doctors. I've responded to calls where women have been that stupid. How many? Quite a few. I've been a fireman for 12 wow. years. Well, That's and he's telling you a story. Well, here's right. the question now with the new potential abortion bans. Are we going to see more home abortions? Yes. Uh, and that's, that's I, I, I don't and know yeah. because it's now down to the state level. It's no longer a federal level. Of course there's going to be more. Yes, that's why this I said they, you don't know. Your fingers. Yes, they, they, we do. We've been there the before. The suggestion is there, yes. But we We've don't know yet. We've been there before. We have right. been there before. JT, thank you. I appreciate you jumping in on this for sure. Um, and I'd like to let a couple other people have an opportunity to voice their opinions. But as far as the abortion issue is concerned, abortions have been happening since the beginning of time. Oh, yeah. Women have figured out a way to get rid of a pregnancy through many different means as long as we've been on this earth. And it's never going to change. It's almost, it's like, it's, it's like um, banning prostitution. You know, am I going to be a prostitute? That's the old no. Exactly. It's it's ludicrous that we have a law that bans women from selling their bodies. If you want to sell your body, go I live in Vegas. Um, well, yeah, but that's the only place. But it's it's kind of the same type of um, ideology. It's it's going to happen. Um, it's just like you guys saying, for instance, well, people are going to die from guns, so why are you doing that? It's the same well, thing. It's exactly. the same thing. Because along that note. It's like you make all these gun laws. Who's going to be left with the guns? The criminals. People aren't going to be able to protect themselves against the criminals because the criminals aren't going to follow the laws, period. I know. I know, I, I know it sounds like a great, as Jeff, that sounds like a great way of thinking, but how do you explain all these countries that don't have guns and they don't have gun crime? And I know they have knife attacks and this and that, but per capita, they don't have nearly as many murders. So how do you explain them being able to thrive and us not? How can you explain how we can thrive without it? I don't need to. You, you raise a good point. I mean, Canada has pretty high rate of gun ownership. It, it, uh, sadly, it's a pretty systemic, baked-in cultural problem. I, I don't have an answer to it. Uh, it, it, a lot of it boils down to is no. They have some better regulations, I guess. And no, no, they don't. They have basically what we have. But the difference is, is the way they handle it is differently than we do. We don't have judges that will take a murderer, slap him on the wrist, throw him back out the street, so he can go murder again. That doesn't happen. Uh, that happens quite regularly here in the United States. Unless they have an exceptional defense team, that does not happen. I don't know of any murderers that have intentionally murdered somebody. Uh, there is a Supreme Court judge right now on 12 different high-profile cases that involved murder. She set the sentence to half to one-third what the state was requiring. And the guys were that's out in less a, than 12 months. But that's not letting anybody out on the streets. But they were out in less than 12 months. And that is not that is not true. Show me where you found that. It was that. brought up in her... Senate or in her in, hearings. In the, in the new Supreme Court justices, she let murderers out and they got a 12 month sentence. I don't yep. believe that. It, it was in her hearing. I, then I think I, you misunderstood what, what they said. There's no way. I think I know what you're talking about, Jeff. I think you're talking about Katanji Brown. Yes. And that had to do with, uh, I think it had to do with child predators. And, yes, it was uh, not murderers. It was not murderers. And the issue is, 
the sentencing guidelines are so screwed up that every single judge sentences the same way that she does. It was chosen to be an issue by people who did not want her confirmed. And they oh, have she the data to confirm, but that's just my opinion. She well, was just know? telling you the truth. Yeah, uh, J J three C one, you are absolutely right. That is that is one hundred percent. Every judge has their they have their, their own quirks, discretion their bad how sides. they I, I, I know that. Or, and so, I didn't realize that that there was a system of okay, when you commit crime A, there's a matrix of how far you can sentence them, which explains yes. kind of where I'm originally from, in Western Nebraska. I see that a lot where the sex offenders get pretty minimum sentences. So to me, that's just saying that district or whatever needs to revamp the perimeters. And is that done on, I guess, what local? That's on every state federal? level. Yeah, yeah it, would every be state, level. it would definitely be state level. But also, you know, if you're if, it's, if you're a first offender, um, we have it set in our constitution that, you know, there's the, the parameters of sentencing also are based off of that. How many offenses you've had, how long ago they were. I mean, it's it's extremely complicated. So to sit there and say, oh, this judge did this, so they're bad, is it, uh, you it's You can point fingers at every judge there case. is. Right. Hmm? You can point a finger at every judge there is on any bench. Absolutely. But it, 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 it's like a lot of the cases that go through courts now. Our, the problem we, is the jails are so full, the judge has got to weigh that while they're deciding their decision. And they got to look at, okay, how dangerous to society is this person really going to be? Do I need to put them in jail or do I need to put them on probation and let them walk around with an ankle bracelet for the next two years? Yeah. All, all that weighs into what the judge's decisions are. 